and family, we are so glad to see everyone in the sanctuary this morning, and we thank you for those that are watching us by Facebook, and we pray ease for the people that are coming in that are on the way. So let's just go to the Lord in prayer first. Father God, we just welcome Holy Spirit. We welcome you now, Father God. We ask that your presence of peace just fall over each and every one of us. We thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to gather together today. We thank you that we do have a church that has a Sunday service where we can come and gather together. Father God, we thank you that in each and every one of us, you have a special and unique purpose. And we thank you that you bring these gifts together this day. Father God, we honor you. We honor you with our praise and our worship today. But Father God, we need you to steal us. We need you to steal those things of the week, of the month, of the year, things that are just trying to creep up and steal that word. Satan, we bind you now in the name of Jesus, and we say, Father, your peace, your peace is our shield and our banner. And we thank you, Father God, that you love us so much that you take care of us and you are with us. We give you all the glory in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And this morning, before we want to begin, um, for those of you that may not know, our pastor's um, mother, Pastor Sharon's mother, Margaret Dunham, went to be with the Lord uh, this past week on Wednesday, that was June the 7th, and uh, she went peacefully, and so we know that she is in the hands of Jesus, but we also know that we are human, and the human body does grieve, you know, Jesus grieved. God grieved when Jesus was on the cross. So we know it's a normal part of what we go through. So let's lift up our pastors, Pastor Rock and Pastor Sharon and their family and Benjamin and his family and all of the extended family and just lift them up in prayer for the peace that passes all understanding. And we're so grateful. And we are gonna have a celebration for life, of her life, and that's gonna be on Tuesday. There was a text sent out and it was the 18th, but it is the 13th. So June the 13th, that's this Tuesday at two o'clock, visitation will follow and it is at Vance Memorial Chapel. So uh, if you will join us to celebrate the life of, I call her Mama Margaret, a lot of people call her Granny, but uh, anyway, just come and celebrate with us her life that day. All right, well I have a devotion, so I'm gonna take another moment because I felt this was appropriate, especially this morning. You know, when you have like three wardrobe changes and, and just everything's coming down against you, you go like, Lord, what is wrong? And he says, you didn't get still with me. And so I went to my devotion and I said, that's it, that's it. Okay, that's not your job. This is from Joyce Meyer. And it comes from 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. And I'll read that verse in just a moment. And it says, you will frustrate yourself <laughs> unbearably. When you, until you learn that you are not to try to do the work of Holy Spirit. We are not to try to do the work of Holy Spirit. It is Holy Spirit's job to take care of us. When we become Christians, he is alive in us and we are to yield to him so that he can help us. And it says you can't take on the job of making necessary changes in your life. That's not your job. It's the job of Holy Spirit. And aren't we blessed to have the power of the Holy Spirit? And the scripture for that is, and all of us, as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of God, are constantly being transformed into his very own image, even increasing splendor from our degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is Holy Spirit. Isn't that good news today that we don't have to try to change ourselves, transform ourselves, or be anything other than what God has purposed us for? We are accountable to God, not to man. How awesome that is. Well, all right. I see four people coming into the sanctuary. Amen. This is awesome. We're all going to rise and we are going to praise the Lord. I'm going to turn it over to praise and worship. Hallelujah. Oh, it's a good day in the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's a great day. Somebody shout, it's a great day. Oh, 
we are thankful that the Spirit came in with you, came in with me, and he's here to enjoy our presence as we are in his. Amen. And who knows, he is the everlasting God. No matter where we go, he's always there. The word says if we went even down into the pits of hell, if we went up, if we come down, wherever we're at, near or far, he's with us. Amen. Amen. And he always loves us. Amen.
Good morning, Oasis Christian Center. Good morning. It's such a blessing to see everyone here this morning. Yes. And I just want to give God all the praise and yes. glory. Hallelujah. Because when you pay your tithes and give what you're supposed to give, God gives back to you yes. tremendously. Yes. He blesses you in all ways. Amen. So we're just going to speak over our tithes and offering this morning. As I tithe and give offerings, I believe and I receive jobs and better jobs, jobs and better jobs. Raises, and bonuses, raises and bonuses, benefits, benefits. Sales, and commissions. sales and commissions, favorable settlements, favorable settlements. estates and inheritances, estates and inheritances. Interest, and income. interest and income, rebates and returns, rebates and and returns. returns. Discounts, and dividends. discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Finding money. Bills decreased. Bills decreased. Bills paid off. Bills paid off. Blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For meeting all my financial needs. For meeting all my financial needs. That I may now have. That I may now have more than enough. More than enough. To give into the kingdom of God. To give into the kingdom of God. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now I'll speak over the ways to give. O-S-B-H-U-B dot com slash Oasis Family Church slash giving slash funds. www dot paypal dot me slash Oasis Family Church. And you can text to give to 334-274-7885. Use the donate button at www.oasisfamilychurchnet or you can use the cash out and enter dollar sign Oasis Family Church. You can also mail your donations to P.O. Box 246, Smith Station, Alabama 36877. And Pastor, can you speak it for a fish? I'm sorry. Ish will be coming to give the word this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you for all those who are gathered in your name here. I pray that they are abundantly blessed. I ask for the right words to say to you people. May they be blessed as they take your Holy Communion this morning. Praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Because communion is not a ritual, there is no prescribed bread or special drink as required. In the Last Supper, Jesus used whatever he had at the table. 
bread was commonly eaten at supper and whatever they were drinking. So I asked those at home to prepare the elements so you too may participate in communion. Even if you have Pepsi and pancakes. Bonnie goes, always gets after me because uh, I'll order a Coke or something carbonated with pancakes. <laughs> I said, no, only milk and coffee. <laughs> So much for levity, the rest of it <laughs> should be serious. <laughs> We're reading in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26, the New Living Testament, translation, I'm sorry. 24, 23, for I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself on the night when he was betrayed the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you drink this bread and drink this cup, you're announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. The same scriptures in the message, let me go over with you again exactly what goes on in the Lord's Supper and why it's so centrally important. <clears throat> Excuse me. I received my instructions from the Master himself and passed them on to you. The Master, Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, took bread, and having given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he did the same thing with the cup. This cup is my blood, and my covenant is with you. Each time you drink this cup, remember me. What you must solemnly realize is that every time you eat this bread, and every time you drink this cup, you reenact in your words and actions the death of our master. Amen. You will be drawn back to this meal again and again until the master returns. You must never let familiarity breed contempt. The bread, John 6, 48 through 45, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that one day, that one may eat of it and not die. We see in the Old Testament a type of Jesus. Manna, the heavenly bread, represented Jesus, the Son of God. According to the psalmist, the manna was the bread of heaven. For 40 years in the wilderness, God provided them with the food of temperance, food that kept them free from sicknesses and diseases, food that descended daily from heaven. All they had to do each morning was to collect enough for their consumption. Yet they despise the manna. The Lord today needs to be careful not to make the same mistake that the children of Israel made 
when they called the manna from God worthless bread. Churches must be careful not to consider, consider Jesus as worthless bread by relegating him to the periphery of their teachings. Anybody who doesn't focus on Jesus Christ and his finished work has either neither the power nor the wisdom of God because in the Bible Christ says he was crucified the power of God and the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 1, 23-24 in the New King James Version. But we priests with but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness but to those who are called both Jews and Greeks Christ the power of God and the wisdom. He is the true bread from heaven, and only he satisfies. Amen. 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 Two items are used in the Holy Communion. The bread, which represents Jesus' body, that was scourged and broken before and during his crucifixion. And the cup, which represents the shed blood. When Jesus walked on earth, he was vibrant, and his body was full of life and health. He was never sick, but before Jesus went to the cross, he was badly scourged by the Roman soldiers, and his body was torn as he hung on the cross. At the cross, God took all of our sicknesses and diseases and put them on Jesus originally perfect and healthy body so that we can walk in divine health yes. Yes. that is why the Bible says by his stripes we are healed on Isaiah 53 5 on the night that he was betrayed. Jesus ate his last supper with his disciples. And knowing what he would accomplish to his, through his sacrifice, he instituted the Holy Communion. Jesus is alive. As we take in communion, we become alive. God is pleased with you and loves you just because you believe in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Remember what he did on the cross <laughs> for us. The blood. Yes. Jesus' blood is his liquid love. Amen. Two items are used in the Holy Communion. The bread which represents Jesus' body that was scourged and broken before and during his crucifixion, and the cup, which represents his shed blood. Jesus' blood is his liquid blood. Mm. 1 Corinthians 10, 16 in the Amplified is the cup of blessing which we bless at the Lord's Supper, not a sharing in the blood of Christ, Indeed it is, is the bread which we break, not a sharing in the body of Christ. Indeed it is. In 1 Corinthians 10, 16 through the 18, in the message, I assume I'm addressing believers now who are mature. I believe those are us. Yes. Draw your own conclusions. When we drink the cup of blessing, aren't we taking into ourselves the blood 
the very life of Christ? And is it the same with the loaf of bread we drink and eat? We break and eat, I'm sorry. Don't we take into ourselves the body, the very life of Christ? Because there is one loaf, our manyness becomes oneness yes. in Christ. Yes. Christ doesn't become fragmented in us. Hallelujah. Rather, we become unified Amen. in Him. Ooh, that's good. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. We don't reduce Christ to what we are. He raises up to what he is. That's basically what happened in old Israel. Those who ate the sacrifices offered on God's altar entered into God's action at the altar. As you lift up the cup, you say, thank you for your precious blood, which has cleansed us of every sin. Right now, I can come boldly to your throne, knowing I am completely righteous, knowing my prayers avail much. Amen. In Proverbs 4, 23, King James, New King James Version, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. The new translation, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. The message, keep vigilant, watch over your heart. That's where life starts. The heart pumps our precious blood through our bodies. So we keep it well and healthy for long life. Jesus is our very essence. His blood sustains us. Yes. That is why we partake of the juice, which represents his blood. Our spiritual life is dependent on him, and we remember. His shed blood cleansed us of our sins, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. And we also would say, this cup is my blood, my new covenant with you. No, I'm sorry, this is what Jesus would say. This cup is my blood, my new covenant with you. Each time you drink this cup, remember me. His liquid glove, glove was given for our salvation. When we talk about the blood of Christ, we're talking about the act of dying that leads to our redemption. The concept can be tied back to the sacrifice of animals. On an altar to atone for the sins of the people. Well, Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice for our sin. Christians don't talk about sacrificing animals because Jesus paid yes. that ultimate price yes. once and for all. Yes. There is power in that blood. We are cleansed and purified by Christ's death. So when we talk about the blood of Christ, we're talking about one of the most powerful acts proving God's love for us, mankind. We need to take the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross as the ama amazingly weighty thing that it is. Yet, when we trust in God, when we realize how significant that sacrifice was, it can actually be freeing and make our days seem that much lighter. So what is it that the blood of Christ does? Christ isn't just die on the cross and leave it at that. 
when we talk about the blood of Christ, we talk about it as an active thing. It's constantly a presence in our lives. It's active and powerful. Communion with him is sharing in his sacrifice. We signify taking in the virtues of Jesus by this sacred practice of communion. In taking, Jesus, taking in Jesus, we take in healing, salvation, and righteousness. Now let us prepare to take communion. Jeff, you may, with Juan, if you would sit. And Ken, uh, some music, please, for this stuff. Of course, those of you at home may um, prepare your elements for communion. We will take it short. Take the bread in your hand. And as I pray this, just believe with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you and remember all that you have done for me on the cross. Thank you for loving me so much. You gave up heaven for me. Thank you for allowing your body to be broken so that mine might be whole. As I partake, I receive your resurrection, life, health, and strength. By your grace, I shall be completely strong and healthy 
all the days of my life. My eyes shall not grow dim, dim, nor shall my strength be abated. No sickness can remain in my body because the same power that raised you from the grave flows through me. By your stripes, I am healed. Now you may partake of the grave. taking your hand, the juice representing the blood of Jesus and believe with me Lord Jesus thank you for your precious blood thank you for washing me clean of all my sins I stand before you completely righteous and forgiven your blood has redeemed me from every curse and today, I can freely receive all the blessings that crown the head of the righteous. Amen. Amen. Now you may partake of the Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Each occasion of taking communion is an opportunity to declare and confess. I now lay hold of all the benefits of Jesus, his full redemption for my life, forgiveness, wholeness, strength, health, and sufficiency. God is pleased with you and loves you just because you believe in Jesus. Remember what he did on the cross for us. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to partake of your Holy Communion. We thank you for healing our bodies and for your salvation. Today and always, we remember what your Son did for us his dying and resurrection were your greatest sins to us and we are eternally grateful we praise you lord and in jesus name amen, amen.
That was amazing. Amen. Amazing, amazing. And you know what? God's got that throat. You know, the devil tried to stop that, but look at God. Look at God. Glory to God. And then we come out from the Spirit of God and praise Him evermore. Well, we have had a homecoming in the church, and it was um, Mother Margaret, Granny, as you know, Pastor Sharon's mother, uh, Pastor Rock's mother-in-law. She has been living with them for a while, a uh, very, very long while. And um, anyway, she has went on to be with the Lord, and we will celebrate her life on Tuesday. It's this Tuesday, June the 13th. It will be at 2 o'clock. There will not be a prior visitation. It will follow the service. Okay, so there's no graveside. We're just going to go to the chapel and celebrate. Um, yes, at the, thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. Advanced Memorial Chapel, and that is here in Phoenix City. All right. So we hope that uh, you will come out and support the pastors. But I'm sure I can speak for the pastors that prayer is the greatest gift. The power of the Holy Spirit can hold you and move you and, and help you and guide you and lift you up. And so we, our prayers are with you, Pastor Sharon and Pastor Rock. We love you dearly. We know that it's only the grace of God that you are even here this morning. And we just, we see the power of God and what he's done. And we know that your mama, <laughs> boy, she helped found this church. <laughs> There's a power in some of these pews. I wish I knew exactly which one it was she sat in. <laughs> because, you know, we've moved these pews around and we've moved, you know, the chairs and we've altered things and everything because of COVID. But you know what? COVID is over, people. It is over. Over, over, over. The lie of the enemy no longer stands. Do you understand? I'm not saying that there's not viruses and bacteria and everything, but what did we just do? We took communion over that. We took the blood of Jesus, the liquid blood of Jesus over that. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to have symptoms. It doesn't mean that something's not going to attack us. Because you know what? If you're the blood bought, you're going you to be attacked. So if you think you're not going to be attacked, I, I, don't, I don't know what gospel you're listening to, but that's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said, take up my cross and follow, I mean, take up your cross and follow me. That means we all got crosses. Some of us were similar in our crosses. Some of us are very different. But one thing that stands true and it unifies us, that's the blood of Jesus. And I love that other thing that you said, that Jesus' blood unifies us. We are fragmented people. We are fragmented, broken. We are just like a mess inside. But think of it as like a glue, just a cleansing glue, just falling through. And it's just God's just putting it all together. He's just gluing it all together. We got broken parts here and broken thoughts there and broken everything. Broken pieces everywhere. And pieces we don't even know about. Jesus, just 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 go in and just close up those, those broken pieces that we don't even know about. We don't even know about them. Because you know what? The devil's going to see something we say or something we do or some, some action. And he's, he, he knows because he's been watching you from the day you were born. And he has been orchestrating a lot of things in your life that you may not even have known was going on. But God knew it. So he went before you. Jesus went to the cross for you. And we have the power of the blood of Jesus in us. And we've all taken communion today. So we are empowered. We're going to go out today and we're going to spread that love to someone. We're going to spread that love. We're going to take on the gift of peace today. And let's thank the Lord. Father God, we thank you so much for the gathering today. We thank you, Father God, that you have just infused us with the word. And you have infused us by taking on these elements, Father. And just taking them in and remembering, remembering what you've done for us. The love that you have for us. Jesus, what a sacrifice. It is an unimaginable, unthinkable sacrifice of unconditional love. And we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the healing, for the, for the financial blessings, for all of the things that come with just taking on your wholeness in our fragmented places and giving us wisdom. Thank you, Father God, that you saw to recreate us. And thank you, Jesus, for the image of God. And Father, we just give you all the glory and the honor in Christ's name. Amen.
And thank you for joining us today. And like Pastor Sh said, please share this message. That was the best communion service ever. So share it with your friends and family today. And go out and just God bless. <laughs>